What's up, y'all? This is Chris, aka C Dub Art, back with another speed draw slash figure review. Now, come to think of it, I don't really have an official name for these types of reviews, so I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me out here. Maybe uh, type in the comments what you think these segments should be. I have my regular speed draw videos and have these what I'm calling hybrid speed draw slash figure reviews. So maybe one of you guys has a better name for this particular segment. If anyone does, I, I like it and I think it's good. I'll pin your comment and that will be what we move forward with as the name for these types of segments. In any case, this time up we have the long awaited McFarlane Kickstarter remastered spawn figure. I've admittedly I've had this figure for a couple weeks now but I was waiting to get a couple other things so I could really do this review justice mainly a new camera <laughs> as well as another figure that I really felt I needed to complete this review but uh even just looking at this box here this thing is crazy so well built and made for displaying your figure. I almost didn't want to open it up. I'm not going to go into all of the ins and outs of the box because as I've said before, these are just mini reviews. I'm not going super in depth, but you know, this will probably be my last words. I'm, I'm probably going to go pretty in depth into this figure just as far as comparisons and all the details of it because it certainly deserves it. Um, this figure has gotten a lot of mixed reviews and unjust hate in my opinion, but it's also gotten a lot of praise. So now you'll get to see what I think of it from an artist perspective. Real quick, before we move forward, for those newcomers, I am an artist. And if you notice that colorful spawn print in the background there, sorry to say it does not come with this spawn figure. Um, that is my artwork. So if you're interested, you're definitely going to want to head on over to cdubart.com. That's my personal site. There you can get plenty of incredibly affordable art prints, just like this one, along with many others, as well as custom prints and comic book issues from my very own creator-owned series, Summons. I also have a nice selection of limited edition signed comic covers that I drew for various indie titles. And of course, I do a bunch of commission artwork as well. So if you are a fan of art, do yourself a favor, pause this video and head on over to cdubart.com and check out my stuff. You will not be disappointed. I'll make it real easy for you and put the link in the description below. So you ain't got no excuse. So now that we got the plug out of the way, without further ado, let's get on with the review. One more thing about this box. Uh, I saw a few reviews of a couple people likening this to a shoebox, and I just immediately thought, this does look like I got some new edition pair of Spawn themed sneakers. I got those new Spawn Force ones, new Al Simmons. Okay, so here is Spawn in all his glory outside of the box and packaging. Again, this isn't like an unboxing or anything like that, so um, I'm, I'm just going straight to the goodies. And as for first impressions, I don't know, man. This guy looks damn good. He looks good. He looks good. I'm thoroughly happy with him. I'm happy with everything from the airbrushed paint apps to the detailed, textured, almost leather-ish cape with the folded hinges all the way to the newly updated metal chains. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this was a remastered, updated release of Todd McFarlane's first Spawn figure. It came out in 1994, I believe. It's pretty much a one-to-one -one updated recreation of that figure, complete with pre-packaged comic book and plastic clamshell figure casing. This was Todd McFarlane's first Kickstarter, and I believe it, it broke all kinds of records, made over $3 million, in my opinion, rightfully so. I was there every step of the way during the campaign. A lot of stuff we got that were add-ons because it kept just breaking stretch goals. We weren't initially going to get those metal chains. We weren't initially going to get a bunch of accessories that I'll show you in a few minutes. And honestly, I think this is such a great figure that I think it stands up to a lot of high-grade import figures. I think that's what Todd McFarlane's goal was with this particular release. I don't think he was trying to match the typical Hasbro retail figure release. I think he was trying 
to go against import figures. A bunch I'll show you so you see what I'm talking about when I say that this stands up against 50, 60 to $100 Japanese import figures. I'm not kidding. You be the judge, but I'm just telling you what I think. Just to give you a close up of the figure, now that I can actually do that. Again, I think the details are amazing. You can see that airbrush in the abs. I'll get to that abs in a minute. There's been a lot of controversy over that. These metal chains that are almost tarnished to give it that grimy feel. Again, you can see what I mean about the textured cape. All those details, it's like leathery texture that the, the cape has been given. And even these hinges, I was skeptical about. Um, you can see them up close, but from just having the figure stand there, they almost blend in. Like with the rest of the folds here, I barely even notice those hinges unless I'm really up close. Again, just superb detailing. And here's Spawn with his first set of accessories I'm going to show you. He has his necroplasm effect pieces here. I'm a little on the fence about that dagger there. Uh, it seems kind of like a needless piece, but again, I'm not going to complain too much because it wasn't originally part of the Kickstarter. It was a stretch goal piece he just threw in there on all of the releases. There's like three different versions of this figure you can get. Um, almost regretting not getting the others along with this because the amount of money that people are charging for these, scalpers are charging for these in the aftermarket or in places like eBay and Macari, you're looking at optimistically $200 to $300 for just one of these figures. When I got this thing for 40 bucks, 57 with tax and shipping. So yeah, I kind of wish I got more than one. <laughs> but yeah, I really do like that long, gnarly necroplasmic effect in his fist there. I kind of wish that we got some different effects with him. Like, it's the one thing that even though they're cheap and, and highly reusable, I would have loved to see some effects similar to those kind of Kirby Crackle inspired effects that uh, Hasbro released with their Marvel Legends figures. Like this one, for instance. Like, something like this would have gone great with this figure. But again, we're not talking about Marvel Legends. And these are his next set of accessories. Probably my favorite. Look at that sword. It is crazy. The, the details on these weapons and that rifle with the gunmetal wash added to it. Like the details on this sword are crazy. You can see the kind of Celtic inspired chain link design. I really like that because I tend to add stuff like that to the weapons that I draw. Or just to like a, a little flavor to either weapons or like tassels or drapery that I want to add like a border to. Just to give it a little bit extra flavor. So I love those effects. This skull, this hilt. <laughs> And all these little details that didn't need to be added. Same on the other side. Spawn symbol up top there. And this gun. Check out this rifle. My goodness. This is Spawn. This is Spawn. Like, you, you needed to have all these effects here. You needed to have that exaggerated bayonet that, which I'm, I'm assuming implied by the design, can swivel. <laughs> I have no idea why it should, but it is perfect 90 spawn. This this is what you need. It doesn't make any sense to have a regular rifle and give it to spawn. He wouldn't even look right with it. I could give this figure a bunch of regular looking guns and they wouldn't look right in spawn's hands. He needs over the top bazookas and stylized McFarlane and Greg Capullo style weaponry with a whole bunch of extra doodads and, and just nonsensical weaponry effects that, <laughs> that don't make any sense. You need that with spawn. If spawn doesn't have that, don't give him a gun. Don't give spawn a gun if it doesn't look like this. And last but not least, we have spawn's alternate head that uh, he came with. And yeah, I, I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about Marvel Legends again, but uh, I had to put that Marvel Legends effect piece on him because it just looked too cool not to. So there it is. I don't know. I just really wish he'd have came with one of these types of effect pieces, you know, done in McFarlane fashion. I think he really would have killed that style of power effect. Just something translucent, that bubbly and nauseating, nauseous looking that could just be put over a fist or a 
open hand like that, I think that would have looked awesome. I don't really think it would have cost that much to do it. He, he went with a couple stylized pieces, and I think a different one came with the modern spawn, but this one came with that shooting necroplasmic sword effect there in his right hand. But I really would have appreciated a necroplasm effect like uh, the Marvel Legends one I put on him here. And also, speaking of this head... It's crazy detailed, it's awesome. We gotta remember guys, this whole figure is painted. There's not one inch of this figure that isn't painted. It's not like McFarlane's people went ahead and got dyed plastic pieces and put them together. No, this is all painted. So for anyone thinking that this is just an updated, upscaled retail figure and all the money went to the packaging and stuff like that, I'm sorry, like you're not thinking right now. You're, you're, you're not thinking, you're, you're, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, <laughs> you're drinking that Haterade, and you're not really thinking about what actually is going into this figure, man. We've gotten so spoiled. We've gotten so spoiled. Everybody's so crazy over articulation. They forgot to appreciate, like, good paint applications and good sculpting and McFarlane has always been great at that. Let me just give you a close up of the head there. Crazy detailing in this head. Look at that. Ugh, it's so gross looking. I love it. Now a lot of people had a lot of again negative things to say about this head because admittedly it doesn't have the best neck articulation. And if you do that then look at that. Like that's that's not very attractive. No one likes that. I don't like that. I'm not gonna make excuses for that. The only thing I will say is that this head was also a bonus lest we forget this head was not originally supposed to come with this figure it is also a bonus piece so everyone needs to relax this was just a, an add-on let it go so as far as a brief rundown of articulation this is what he looks like with his cape hinges folded all the way back and this is about as high as you can move his arms out they are single hinged at the elbow and there is a swivel the shoulder and upper bicep and this is what he looks like with his cape hinges closed for the most part anyway it's a little hindered because the uh, larger cape piece is pointed further down past his foot a little bit so it's kind of arcing him up slightly but more or less this is what they look like with the cape hinges closed he can do a full split i mean has kind of a pseudo swivel here slightly yeah it's, it's, it's got a nice swivel there but you have a really nice swivel right here this goes all the way down at this hinge right here. It's really well hidden in the sculpt where these patches are, or pouches rather. And he also has a swivel at the calf. And I've, I've heard a lot of complaints. I share them as well with like the ankle articulation with a lot of McFarland's retail figures, particularly like the uh, DC Multiverse and the Mortal Kombat ones. Mostly the DC multiverse, but these are really well hidden. They don't look like that nasty, bulky ball joint that a lot of those other figures have, which to me is evocative of the fact that, again, this is not a retail figure. Money went into this thing. <laughs> you know, pay attention to it. So maybe he will start using some of these techniques in the retail figures. So they'll look better. Which I have no doubt that on some level he will start incorporating a lot of these mechanics into his retail figures. But the main thing that everybody's complaining about is that torso, that pre-posed torso. Oh man, they fallen. You almost had it. You almost gave us a perfect figure. If only you could have just given us a freaking regular ab crunch. Why in the world? world would you give us this pre-posed sculpted torso you ruined the figure of course i think this is nonsense i do not think you ruined the figure with a pre-posed torso this is fine it's fine it's okay guys it's fine in lieu of a practical ab crunch, he gave us this waist swivel joint and there is pliable plastic here so you can get some range here again it is not the best i'll admit but don't act like this spawn figure can't move. Don't act like this spawn figure can't pose. It can pose, man. Stop acting like this thing can't pose. And now onto the height comparisons. This is what I was waiting for. Again, I had the McFarlane Kickstarter figure on the way. I did not get um, a Mortal Kombat 11 spawn figure, which is on the right there. And I certainly did not own the 10th anniversary McFarlane Toys spawn figure, which is on the left over here. So yeah, I wanted to have all three of these to really get a clear comparison because these are the three figures that I've been wanting to own. 
ever since I heard about the Spawn Kickstarter. Obviously, the, the most similarities are between the Kickstarter figure and the Mortal Kombat Spawn, but all three of these couldn't be more different from one another if you really think about it. Back in the day, this 10th anniversary Spawn figure was probably the most articulated figure maybe McFarlane ever released. There's a lot of great things about this figure. Again, great sculpting, especially in this cape. Uh, the real chains, this was real popular in like the heyday of McFarlane toys. He always added these touches that really set his figures apart from the rest. But the crazy thing about this one is, anybody else want to maybe give me a count of how many times I've said the word crazy in this video? You know, I'm just interested. But the interesting thing about this figure is the accessories that he came with. He came with this incredible crucifix kind of gravestone cross base that is really tall. It's the same one that I just displayed the Kickstarter spawn on, and it's awesome. It's it's worth the price of this, even on the aftermarket if you guys can find this figure if you don't own it already i definitely recommend hunting this down and seeing if you can get it for a fair price it's going to be up there because it is an older figure again the 10th anniversary and at this point you know what, what are we going on uh 25 years i don't know i don't know how to count and of course we have probably my second favorite i don't, I don't know it's, it's hard to tell it's hard to decide we have the mk11 spawn figure which is modeled after his appearance in the game and a lot of people were excited about this one because it was the first articulated spawn figure we'd gotten in some time and uh, honestly probably since the 10th anniversary one all the others were glorified statues if we're being honest this one was the next one to come out where it was like oh wow okay this is it so this got a lot of praise especially its first release but if i were to put either of these figures up against the kickstarter spawn figure here i'm going with the kickstarter spawn like it's just more updated it's a more premium looking figure it's got the best accessories Aside from maybe that cross stand that came with the 10th anniversary figure, that's pretty cool. But overall, in my opinion, pretty much out of all the Spawn figures to date, it's got the best marriage of both sculpt and articulation without losing too much of either or giving in to too much of either. That's just me though, that's, that's my taste. So those are my three Spawn figures there. And since Spawn here is a McFarlane's toy release, here is some more McFarlane's toy retail figures from the DC Multiverse line. They have Superman and The Flash. And here's Spawn with some more old school McFarlane toys figures. I'm not really sure which one that modern Spawn figure on the right there is. I'm not sure which wave of Spawn figures that was from, but I lost the weird mount that it comes with. So I'm just using any old base I could find. And on the left here we have Wanda Fitzgerald, the lost love of Spawn's life. Yeah, I can see Spawn is really upset after that last one. Let's see if we can cheer him up with some import figures here. We have the Moffex Batman Hush Blue Batman and Batman Hush Superman. And here we have some more import figures. On the left there in white, we have the Tatsunoko Heroes Fighting Gear Kashan. And then of course we have SH Figure Arts Sailor Moon. And all the way on the right there, we have Super Action Statue Fist of the North Star Kenshiro. Look out for these because they're probably going to be the next review slash speed draws that I do. Hint, hint, wink, wink. And even though this might be a bit of a cheat, since Angela is no longer part of Spawn's universe, this is the Marvel Legends Angela. I just went ahead and took a Sharpie and colored in her face paint to make it a little bit more authentic to Spawn's version. And last but not least, you know, uh, you know I just had to do a little something for the culture. You know, I had to get all the, to get all the brothers and sisters together for a little bit. A nice little group shot. Yeah, I hope y'all got enough comparisons. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for the review and the comparisons. So next, just like uh, my last video, I'm going to pick out a cool pose and I will do a speed draw of it at that. So that's coming up. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it, especially if you stuck all the way to the end. Again, you know, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you dig what I'm doing here. I'd like to grow a lot more, see where I can take this, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. So I really appreciate any feedback, all that good stuff. In the meantime, enjoy the vid. Thanks. Peace.
respect. That's not in the cards. <laughs> <laughs>